Especially we want to welcome those at home and uh, uh, the rest of having conversation and all that's going on here. But I want to welcome you, especially at home. We're looking forward to having a great time this morning. Mary Jane's the preacher. We've got students taking part. We're saying goodbye to Bill and Rose who are moving away from Folkestone. So it's going to be a fantastic morning in this family of God together. And we welcome you to join us. And we're excited about what God's going to do amongst us. So we'll see you uh, in two minutes' time. Every disaster when I run away, love's running faster. Every mistake, every disaster when I run away, love's running faster. Every mistake, every disaster when I run away.
Well, good morning, everyone. Fantastic to see you. Welcome to Harbour Church. Still lots of people coming in. It's because we're starting on time for a change. What an amazing thing that is. want to welcome you to Harbour Church this morning. I'm Gareth. I'll be leading the service this morning. And we've got a lot going on this morning. And uh, we're excited about what God's going to do amongst us. We're expecting him to speak to us. I'm expecting him. I hope you are. I hope your heart is open and uh, your spirit is ready to receive from God. I want to read to you from uh, Psalm 127. In the, in the prayer meeting on Wednesday lunchtime, I, uh, I shared this scripture. And as I was just thinking about this morning, I thought I'm going to share the same scripture. Most of you weren't there. So uh, here you go. It says, uh, unless the Lord builds a house, the work of the builders is wasted. Unless the Lord protects a city, guarding it with sentries will do no good. It's useful for you to work so hard from early morning until late at night, anxiously working for food to eat, for God gives rest to his loved ones. You know, as I thought about that on Wednesday and again this morning, I'm just reminded that we are we can spend all of our lives working really hard, but unless it's a, a work built by God, it's wasted energy. And uh, that can be a bit depressing, except that the opposite is true. If we trust God, he builds and we rest. And so this morning, I just want to encourage you. Let's expect God to do something, building something here, building something in my heart. Let's expect supernatural stuff to happen together this morning because when we do, we rest and we let him work. He builds. He does a fantastic job, much better than we can do. So just want to encourage you this morning. All of this doesn't come about by our effort, but by his supernatural uh, building and so let's I'm going to pray and then I'm going to hand over to Ian and we're going to expect God to do something amongst us this morning father we want to thank you we want to thank you that we don't have to rely on our own strength we don't have to rely on what we can do but we trust you we trust you to build something here this morning build something in my heart build something in our hearts let the church this morning just just grow because you are doing something amongst us so, Father, we pray, just come by your Holy Spirit and touch us this morning. I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Ian's going to lead us in our worship this morning as we sing. All right, shall we stand and sing? Wonderful, so wonderful. Is your unfailing love Your cross has spoken mercy over me No eye has seen, no ear has heard No heart could fully know How glorious, how beautiful you are Beautiful one, I love. Beautiful one, I adore. Beautiful one, my soul must sing. Powerful, so powerful. Your glory fills the skies. Your mighty works display for all to see. The beauty of your majesty awakes my heart to sing. How marvelous, how wonderful you are. Beautiful one, I love. Beautiful one, I adore. Beautiful one, my soul must sing. Beautiful one, I love. Beautiful one, I adore. Beautiful one, my soul must sing. For you open. 
from my eyes to your warmth is in you. You captured my heart with this love. Cause nothing on earth is as beautiful as you. For you open my eyes to your warmth is in you. You captured my heart with this love. Cause nothing on earth is as beautiful as you. Beautiful one, I love. Beautiful one, I adore. Beautiful one, my soul must sing. My soul, oh my soul, my soul must sing. My soul, my soul must sing. My soul, my soul must sing. Beautiful one. My soul, my soul, my sin. My soul, my soul, my sin. My soul, my soul, my sin. Beautiful one, beautiful one, I love. Beautiful one, I adore. Beautiful one, my soul, my sin. Beautiful one, I love you. Beautiful one, I adore. Beautiful one, my soul must sing. Yes, Lord, just thank you that you have opened our eyes to your wonders. Lord, that you are marvelous, that you are beautiful. Lord, we are in awe of who you are, of what you have done. And we praise you this morning. We thank you for your amazing love, for your mercies that are new every morning, for your faithfulness that just endures for all time. Brokenness and wandering through all my fears and unbeliefs, your faithfulness appears to me again. Through mountain top and valley low, in every season, this I know your goodness, like the dawn, will break again. Oh, your mercy's rising. In this heart again, and my soul begins to sing. Stay on you every morning, let like you every morning. Great is your faithfulness, your mercies on you every morning, let like you every morning. Great is your faithfulness. every good and perfect gift in your endless grace you give flowing from the father's heart to mine beams of heaven as i go through this wilderness below the fullness of your love for all of time oh your mercy's rising this heart again and my soul begins to sing stay on you every morning the you every morning great is your faithfulness your mercies on you every morning the you every morning great is your faithfulness your mercies are new every morning, they new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Your mercies are new every morning, they new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. O 
for your mercy's rising in this heart again. Oh, your mercy's rising in this heart again. Oh, your mercy's rising forever shining in this grateful heart again. To stay on you every morning, and you every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Your mercies are new every morning, new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Your mercies are new every morning, new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Your mercies are new every morning. Thank you every morning. Great is your faithfulness. And great is your faithfulness. So great is your You give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord, you give life. You give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord, so great you are. Great are you, Lord. Sits your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you, Lord. Lord, we pour out our praise to you. As you give life, you are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord, so great you are. Great are you, Lord, since your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise, we pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. It's your breath in our lives. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lives. So we pour out our praise to you only. We pour out our praise to you. You are hope, you are life, you are love. Come on, let's lift our voices in praise now. While these guys play, 
Just give your praise to him. Use your own words. Sing the words of the song. I don't mind, but just give him your praise. Use, use the breath of our lungs to pour out our praise. All the earth and all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord, all the earth, and all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord, all the earth. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. Since your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lives so we pour out our praise to you only it's your prayer in our lives so we pour out our praise we pour out our praise it's your prayer in our lives so we pour out our praise to you only so great are you Lord. Great are you, Lord. Great you are. Great are you, Lord. You are high over all. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord. You are high. I really feel like we need to sing that bridge again. And when we sing it, that we'll just declare it over this town and over this place that one day when Jesus comes back every knee will bow and all the earth will shout his praise well, I just pray that yeah over this place that we would speak that over these people now so they can have what we have they can find that joy that is found to be living on the earth with Jesus here but I just yeah as we sing this just pray to God for those those people that you know who are so close to, to accepting Jesus and seeing that life that we have but they just need that that the spirit of God to intervene like we can we can do so much but it's God that changes hearts so I just pray yeah as we sing this just pray it over the people that you know that your heart is crying out for will shout your praise our hearts will cry these bones will sing praise are you Lord and all the earth will shout your praise our hearts will cry these bones will sing praise are you all the earth 
and all the earth will shout your praise our hearts will cry these bones will sing great are you Lord all the earth and all the earth will shout your praise our hearts will cry these bones will sing Great are you, Lord. You say it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise, we pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lives. So we pour out our praise to you only. To say that I love you, to worship you now. Your love is perfect, and your heart is kind. I'm yours forever, forever you're mine. Jesus, the anthem of my heart. Jesus, the anchor of my soul. I'm overwhelmed by all you are. Oh, how I love you. You call me beloved. You call me friend. Your grace says I'm worthy, you welcome me in. Now all that I long for, and all that I need, is to be in your presence, forever I'll fall at your feet. Jesus, the anthem of my heart. Jesus, the anchor of my soul. I'm overwhelmed by all you are. Oh, how I love you. Jesus, the anthem of my heart. Jesus, the anchor of my soul. I'm overwhelmed by all you Oh, how I love you. You're faithful to the end. God, you are always good. Where do I begin? There's so many reasons to love you. Your promise never breaks, your beauty never fades. What else can I say? There's so many reasons to love you. You're faithful to the end, God, you are always good. 
There's so many reasons to love you. Your promise never breaks. Your beauty never fades. What else can I say? Jesus, the anthem of my heart. Jesus, the anchor of my soul. I'm overwhelmed by all you are. Oh, how I love you. Jesus, the anthem of my heart. Jesus, the anchor of my soul. I'm overwhelmed by all you are. Oh, how I love you. Oh, how I love you. For those who have not heard that before, that it's a message in tongues. The Bible tells us to wait and God will give us an interpretation. So uh, if you've got that, don't hesitate. <laughs> Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. I think I could vaguely hear Jill from the back then. Do you want to come down the front and speak in the microphone, Jill? Sorry. The Lord says that some of you might feel broken, that you feel hurt, but he knows you, he knows your heart, and he loves you with an everlasting love, and nothing can break that. And he just wants you to look to him, and he will release you. He will just break all them chains that are hurting or breaking you. Amen. Yeah. God is a God of freedom, isn't he? He breaks the chains that bind. We spoke about that last week. Well, what a phrase that we just, Jesus, the anthem of my heart. Jesus, the anchor for my soul. You know, the anthem is the song. He's the song of my heart and the anchor. He, we are secure in him. You know, there comes a time in a family's life couple of years back when Ellis left home for the first time off to university and things changed and they were we're at that moment this morning slightly different Bill and Rose would you come down here please Bill and Rose are moving to Chatham and uh, most of you know some of you don't know but uh, we're going to pray for them and we're going to send them so do you want to come up here somewhere I'm going to give Bill a microphone in a minute which is scary but <laughs> say I keep talking but I would just like to say just a little thank you to everybody for the family that we have made here I'm now going to my family and the Lord gave 
the opportunity to us. Please, I keep saying to everybody, don't lose faith. I've been crying with the songs that we're singing. Please, never lose faith. We put our name down to move last January, and the Lord's given us the most beautiful flat we could ever want to finish our lives with. Coming up 90, 93, and but for our church, I am so sorry we're going to be leaving our church, but please, everybody, never, ever lose faith. I know it can be difficult at times, it really can, and I've said to the Lord many times, what on earth are you doing, Lord? Please help us, and he has. So for everybody, I know a lot of people have lose, lost partners. I feel very with Barbara, which is our good friend, and when you lose a partner, but this is what the Lord does. He does take and he gives, and he does give so, so much, and he's given so, so much to me and Bill. And thank you very much for all that you've done in our church. We will be back. <laughs> we will be back. We've got a nice little room where we are, so we will be back. They thank keep you. promising that, so. <laughs> Yeah, it's funny, really, because I like to say, you are my family, you are our family, and you always will be. But 11 years ago, to this day, and this date, Rose and I were baptised in the Mediterranean in Spain. Very mysterious how it happens on the same day. I'm so pleased and proud. Thank you. I'm going to get you to speak again in a minute. Tim's going to come up. Sarah would have, yeah, Sarah would have uh, loved to be here, but she's got a migraine today, so, so um, I have to step in. And I'm not as good at words as she is, but um, <laughs> I've, I've just, we're going to pray for you guys, and Tim will probably lead us, I'm sure, and, and I'll pray as well. But we just want to pray, you know, that you go from here to you know obviously moving to Chatham that you settle into the church there really well we'll see you again we know we will but but we just want to pray that you'll settle in but also that where you are you will be the witness that you've been here and you'll speak of Jesus if you've spoken Jesus here because you know so 11 years baptized you know not you know becoming Christians in your 80s and yet you've probably spoken the gospel to more people than most of us who've been Christians for you know, 30, 40 years, and I commend you for that. Keep speaking Jesus to people, and, uh, and we're going to pray that God will, will give, your, you know, give you a voice and a ministry where you go. So I'll pray, and then, uh, and then Tim, I'm going to give the mic to you as well. So, Father, we want to pray for these two. Father, that as they move from here, that it won't be uh, a, 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 a further retirement, but it will be a, a new ministry and where they are, that they will get to speak of you, to speak the good news, to declare your praise amongst the community that they become part of, to preach the gospel to those that don't yet know you. Father, we send them, we send them to preach in that community that they're going to be part of when they move up to Chatham. So we pray your blessing on them. You pray, we pray the richness, richness of your love for them. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Praise God. Can I just say what a privilege and a blessing it's been to get to know you guys and have you in our connect group. Um, it's, it's just been a real joy um, and we're going to miss you so much. Um, but we, we pray that you will come back and see us. Um, and we pray that maybe we'll come up and see you. Um, but the great thing is, wherever you go, God is with you. He goes ahead of you. And I just want to read this scripture, um, which I believe he gave me for you the other day. And it's a well-known scripture. It's in Jeremiah 29, verse 11. And it says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future and that's God's promise to you I believe he wants to give you a hope and a future and you can just keep looking to him and trusting him as you have for these last 11 years and let's just pray for you father we just thank you for Bill and Rose Lord for their witness for you Lord but father we just we just release them into your hands Lord into your purpose for them Lord and we thank you that you haven't finished with them that you're just beginning 
Lord, a new chapter in their lives. Father, would you take them and use them for your glory, Lord. Fill them with your joy and your peace and your love, Lord. And Father, I know it's always difficult when we leave somewhere we love. But Father, will you make this new place a home for them as well? Just the same as you have here. Lord, would you just use them mightily and let people come around them and love them and encourage them and support them, Lord. Father, put them in the right church up there, Lord. And Father, let it be a great church. Lord, just bless them in every way. Keep them well, healthy and strong. And let their voices be heard wherever they go. We just commit them to you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Great, don't go anywhere. <laughs> in a moment, Don Morris is going to come and share some stuff with us. But, you know, um, we break bread together. We probably need somebody to grab your stuff and bring up here for breaking bread. Um, when, when we break bread together, of course, that comes out of partly out of the Passover. And part of the tradition of Jews today with Passover is to get the oldest person in the church to, or in the family to tell the youngest person in the family what God has done. So Bill said, I want to be part of Breaking Bread on Sunday morning. So we're going to do that in a moment. But first, Demaris is going to come and just share with us uh, some thoughts she's got on, on, uh, on Breaking Bread, communion. And then Bill is going to lead us through that, which is quite a scary thing, Bill, with a microphone. But anyway, so Demaris, if you come up and just share with us uh, what you've got. And, uh, and then she's going to pray for us. But she doesn't want to pray in English because she's nervous, so she's going to pray in Italian. So uh, there we go. Anyway, tomorrow it's over to you. <laughs> Too many microphones. Hi. I am very excited. I'm so blessed to be here with you. It's such an honor, an honor for me. I want to thank you all for this time that we spend, spend here together in this, in this week. And I would like to share with you a passage from the Bible. In the first Corinthians. First Corinthians 11 that says, in the following uh, directives, I have no place for you, for you meetings do more than harm than good. In the first place, I had that when you come together as a church, there was a division among you. And to some extent, I believe it. Don't doubt there have no difference uh, among you to show which of you God's approval. So then, when you come together, it's not the Lord's Supper you eat. For when you are eating, some of you had with your own supper. As a result, one person remain hungry and another get drunk. Don't, um, don't you have homes to eat and drink in? Or do you despise the church of God by um, humiliating those who have nothing? What I shall I, I say to you? Shall I pray? Certainly, not in this matter. In these passages, we say that the Apostle Paul is speaking to the members of the Corinthian church. And we can say that as we read that uh, her, um, their uh, discipline has been a little bit for, uh, forgotten. And because we can see that they do, uh, do, in their meetings, they do more ha harm than good. We can say division. And so um, the Apostle Paul is speaking about the, um, the Lord's Supper. And the words there in which, in which uh, way they should do it. And so um, they um, was a church that they abandoned in a gift. So maybe they expect to be praised, to be honored. But the Apostle Paul, in um, a faithful way, said to them how to celebrate the, the Lord's Supper. So in the verse um, 27, it's written that uh, Paul uh, says that whoever approaches uh, to the Lord's Supper in a, with an unworthy heart is sinning. So this morning I would like that each one of us can just 
uh, examining itself, like he says in the following verse, in the verse 28, that is written, everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. But when I read these passages, I was thinking that the, past, the, the, Apostle, Paul, the Apostle Paul does not say, let him examine himself and then um, not, not eat nor drinking. He just said, before, examine yourself and then approach to the Lord's Supper. So this morning I would like that all the church can just close the eyes one moment and we can just ex examine ourselves one moment. Because the, the, the examination, the exam, is not just like a, a door that can detach you from the, from the Lord's Supper, from the from the communion, but it's just like a door in which you are linger on and you can, um, you can um, be ready to do something that is very important. So I would like that we can all just close our eyes and we can just examine ourselves and we can be one moment, a few minutes silence in front of the presence of God. And then I will pray for you. Oh, caro Padre, ti voglio ringraziare, Signore, con tutto il mio cuore, Signore, per questa opportunità che tu ci dai, Signore, di essere qui, Signore, anche se in questo momento, Signore, magari sto pregando nella mia lingua, Signore, ma veramente la preghiera, Signore, arriva a te, Signore, e io ti voglio ringraziare, Signore, perché tu ci dai l'opportunità, Signore, tu ci rendi degni, anche quando non lo siamo, Signore, di accostarci alla tua presenza, Signore. Grazie, Signore, perché tu non, noi non siamo degni, Signore, ma per il tuo sangue, Signore, per il tuo amore, Signore, per quel favore meritato, Signore, che tu hai fatto per noi, Signore, noi siamo degni, Signore, e io ti voglio pregare, Signore, che ognuno di noi, Signore, in questo momento, Signore, non possa prendere alla leggera, Signore, quello che stiamo facendo, Signore, quello che tu ci hai insegnato, Signore, ma veramente che ogni cuore, Signore, possa essere preparato, Signore, che ogni cuore, Signore, che ogni persona qui in questa stanza, Signore, possa esaminare se stesso, Signore, ed essere pronto, Signore, e chiedere perdono, Signore, e veramente, Signore, a dire, Signore, sono qui, Signore, sono, sono rotto, Signore, Signore, non sono degno, Signore, ma per il tuo sangue, Signore, io sono purificato, Signore, e posso accostarmi alla tua santa cena, Signore, io ti prego con tutto il mio cuore per questa chiesa, Signore, che veramente possa essere una chiesa santa, Signore, ti prego per il leader, Signore, grazie, Signore, per tutto il lavoro che fanno, Signore, veramente che questa chiesa possa essere una chiesa rilevante, Signore, in questa società, Signore, che veramente il mondo, Signore, possa trovare in questa chiesa, Signore, un rifugio, Signore, a dire veramente che, che loro, Signore, possano fare ogni cosa sotto la guida del tuo santo spirito signore che veramente questa chiesa possa essere unita signore unita signore per lavorare per il tuo regno signore grazie padre grazie per questa mattina signore continua a benedire ogni cosa signore e ogni cosa te la chiedo nel tuo santo nome amen thank you damaris it's quite uh, a strange thing isn't it, to hear somebody praying for you and us and not knowing what they're talking about But God, whatever you've got for us, that Damaris has prayed, we want it, don't we? So I'm going uh, um, <laughs> to hand over you, and you're going to lead us through. And then, there we go. <laughs> okay. I love it when we actually take communion together. It takes me back over 2,000 years. And I'd love to have been there with Jesus and watched him talk, because I love him to bits. And... He doesn't seem to talk to me, but one day he will, or one day I'll face him face to face. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, gave it to his disciples and said, Take this and eat, for this is my body, which is to be broken for you, the body of Jesus.
After supper, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, gave it to his disciples, said, Take this and drink, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is to be shed for you. For I tell you now, I shall not eat of this bread or drink from this vine until I am once more in my Father's house. The blood of Jesus. Mashti kurianda gea da eda, bamba bia e laria ke eda, kurianda eda, um baba liuti dia ke eda, kanda dia de eda e lusta e bari da eda, kunda dia ke eda, e muria e naya ke eda e lusti kurianda eda, kaya e muba e nara ke eda, amen. A couple of years back, Bill said, sometimes I don't know what to pray. I said, well, that's when you pray in tongues and your spirit cries out, doesn't it? And he's praying for us that way. Thank you. I'm sure lots of people are going to want to give you a hug at the end. <laughs> I hope you're right with that. You might want to put a mask on before you do that. <laughs> anyway, thank you for coming up, guys. And uh, obviously, oh, I forgot something complete. Wait, 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 Aaron. Wait, 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 wait. That, that Mary Jane's uh, got flowers and chocolates for you. <laughs> well, as I said, it's a moment for this family. But when they get to Chatham, these guys will be added to another family and uh, I'm sure they'll be loved and, uh, and cherished as much as they are here. I don't know who that's going to make the oldest person in the church now. I'm, I'm... <laughs> yeah, at least I look younger than you, Aaron. So. <laughs> Aaron's younger than me. You wouldn't believe it, would you? <laughs> it might be my dad. I don't know. Sorry? Celia, okay. Is Celia here? I don't know. Anyway. Well, it's fantastic to be able to, to do this. I'm going to let the kids go to Sunday school now. While we do that, I've just got a few things. Tonight, Churches Together service is here. Um, pray for Sarah because she has stepped in at the last minute as preacher and now she's got a migraine. So... Um, it might be me or Mary Jane, who knows? <laughs> um, uh, uh, six, six o'clock, I think. Okay. Uh, and next Saturday, there's a men's event. Uh, if you haven't booked in already, there's an event bright booking that you can book in. There's going to be Chinese food and stuff, so you do have to pay for it. But anyway, um, that's next Saturday. The week after that, and this is a bit of confusion in my brain because I thought it was the same day, but it's not the same day. On the 20th, there's a, uh, a prayer breakfast here. I didn't write the time down. 8.30, uh, Saturday morning um, on the 20th uh, coming up, uh, which will be great. We're looking forward to that. Um, Josh, can you come and talk to us about Christmas stuff? Do you want to use that one? Great. Um, is it? I'll take it off. Um, good. Well, one of the uh, one of the things that Harbour Church does best is outside events. Yes, if you've been part of the church for a while, you'll know that. If you've joined the church recently, you might not know that because the last time we did one was actually two years ago this week, <laughs> believe it or not, uh, which was our big firework event. And of course, as well as that, we usually have our annual summer fun day but you know because of the world we've been in we haven't been able to do any of those so with that in mind let me take you forward a few weeks to six days before christmas six sleeps to christmas all right sunday the 19th of december and we are going to put on an open air carol event here at 
the church building. And um, we would love you to get involved in this. It's going to be from 5 o'clock till about 6.30. The first half an hour of it, we're going to have loads of activities outside, like, you know, things that people are used to from us that you would find at one of our fun days or one of our firework events. So some free food, free drink, yeah, hot chocolate, donuts, mulled wine, mince pies, bit of entertainment going on outside, bit of singing as people come in, and then gathering together for about half five to sing some amazing Christmas carols, declaring the message of hope that we know about at Christmas to the community, and an activity as well with the children. And we're just believing it's going to be a brilliant opportunity to share the hope that is contained in the Christmas message. Sound like a good idea? Good. Do you want to be involved in it? Well, for the first time in two years, Anna's going to be hunting you down with her list of sign-up volunteers, okay? So far, it is empty, right? Your name is needed. There are loads of things you can get involved with. We'll talk a little bit more about it over the coming weeks. But if you want to see Anna and get in early with a job that you might want, make sure you get in first, otherwise someone else will get that job. There's also loads of things to do beforehand as well. So... This, you don't have to do something on the day. You can do something beforehand to help. Uh, for example, we're hoping to give away presents to children, so we want to wrap them up and stuff like that. So if you like wrapping presents, not only are you weird, but also there's an opportunity for you to wrap presents before that event. Uh, so, yeah, brilliant day. So 19th of December, Sunday, 5 o'clock till 6.30. Whatever you're doing, cancel it. Make sure you come to that and a great opportunity for the first time in over two years to do an outside event as Harbour Church. Sounding good? good. Brilliant. Gareth, thanks. So we need to pray for good weather on the 19th of December. Um, obviously, we're giving you lots of uh, um, uh, notice on that because we want you to volunteer. We want you to be part of that. We have another Christmas event much sooner than that. The 5th of December, Danny Oates will be here again. You'll remember he was here last year when we were like, able to have a few people in the building and we did several different repeated events. Well, this year he's going to be with us on December the 5th, which is a Sunday. He's going to be here with his band uh, doing worship on Sunday morning. And then the evening we're going to like, have a carol concert similar to last year. So there are two events that we want you to be inviting people to. Obviously, we don't really need so many volunteers for the 5th of December, but we do want you to bring people, and it's going to be a fantastic event. Danny is a fantastic musician, as you know. This time, he's going to have musicians with him that play all the time with him, and it's going to just be fantastic, and I'm really looking forward to that. So just keep those two dates in your diary and uh, be inviting your friends. Flyers will be ready very soon for that. I'm looking to see Katie. Oh, Katie is here. She, it's on her list of jobs. They're printing. I know. Great. Uh, Mary Jane is our preacher. Let's pray for her as she comes. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. As she comes and shares with us. Father, we pray for Mary Jane. Father, we pray you'd quicken the anointing that is on her this morning. Father, we pray that you would speak to us through her, that you'd bring revelation to our heart, that you'd grow us in our spirit because of what Mary Jane is going to share with us this morning. Father, we pray for clarity of mind and thought and that she communicate really well. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. It is so good to see so many faces this morning. It is fantastic. And um, I'm really excited for wanting to just share with you this morning. Now, if you were here a couple of weeks ago, um, if not, you might have listened online. I shared with you uh, about King Josiah. Some of you might remember that. And today I want us to continue um, looking at Josiah from the Old Testament. Um, we started to talk about Josiah as being one of the good kings in the Bible, one of the eight good kings of Judah. He was the last good king. And in fact, he was described in the Bible as there being no other king like him. So he is a pretty awesome character for us to be looking at. And a couple of weeks ago, we looked at how Josiah, when he turned age 16, it said that he began to seek God. And a couple of weeks ago, I just shared with you some thoughts about seeking God. If you want to go and listen to that, go back, um, check it out. And um, I'm not going to say any more on that one. So today, I want us to kind of continue the story, Josiah. Age 16, he began to seek God. 
And then after that, he started to purge Judah, purify Judah. He started to get rid of all the idols and destroy the idol worship that had taken over. And we're going to then look at something quite significant that happened during the reign of Josiah. So if you have your Bibles or your Bible app or uh, look at the screen, we're going to look at two kings. Just going to find it in my own Bible. Two kings chapter 22, okay? And I am going to read quite a lot. I think a couple of weeks ago, I read about two verses um, of Josiah from his actual story. But today, we're going to really read through, it might be the whole of this chapter. So um, let's get ready. So 2 Kings 22. Um, At the start, this is what we um, read a couple of weeks ago. Josiah was eight years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 31 years. His mother was just Jedar, Jedadar, I can't I haven't practiced these names, do apologize. The daughter of Adiah from Buzkah. He did what was pleasing in the Lord's sight and followed the example of his ancestor David. He did not turn away from doing what was right. In the 18th year of his reign, King Josiah sent Shaphan, son of Azaliah, and grandson, there's some, there's some tricky names in here. I should have practiced with Gareth first. Meshullam, thank you very much, uh, Sean, the court secretary to the temple of the Lord. He told him, go to Hilkiah, the high priest, and have him count the money the gatekeepers have collected from the people at the Lord's temple. Entrust this money to the men assigned to supervise the restoration of the Lord's temple. So what's happening here is he's sending money, and part of Josiah's reign was to restore and repair the temple, okay? It says, then they can use it to pay the workers to repair the temple. They will need to hire carpenters, builders, and masons. Also, have them buy the timber and the finished stone needed to repair the temple. But don't require the construction supervisors to keep account of the money they receive, for they are honest and trustworthy men. So here we get pretty awesome thing. Josiah's going, actually, we need to sort out and restore God's house. And he makes it a priority to restore his temple. We're going to keep reading, though. I do apologize. It's quite a long passage. But stay, stay with me. I'm going to keep reading. Because this is what happens next. This is the bit about today. Verse 8, it says, Hilkiah, the high priest, said to Shaphan, the court secretary, I have found the book of the law in the Lord's temple. Then Hilkiah gave the scroll to Shaphan, and he read it. Shaphan went to the king and reported, Your officials have turned over the money collected at the temple of the Lord to the workers and supervisors at the temple. Shaphan also told the king, Hilkiah the priest has given me a scroll. So Shaphan read it to the king. When the king heard what was written in the book of the law, he tore his clothes in despair. Then he gave these orders to Hilkiah the priest, Icam, son of Shaphan, Akbor, son of Micaiah, Shaphan, the court secretary, and Isaiah, the king's personal advisor. Go to the temple and speak to the Lord for me and for the people and for all Judah. Inquire about the words written in this scroll that has been found. For the Lord's great anger is burning against us because our ancestors have not obeyed the words in this scroll. We have not been doing everything it says we must do. So Hilkiah the priest, Achim, Akbor, Shaphan, and Isaiah went to the new court of Jerusalem to consult with the prophet Huldah. She was the wife of Shalom, son of Tikvah, son of Harhaz, the keeper of the temple wardrobe. She said to them, the Lord, the God of Israel, has spoken. Go back and tell the man who sent you, this is what the Lord says. I am going to bring disaster on this city and its people. All the words written in the scroll that the king of Judah has read will come true. For my people have abandoned me and offered sacrifices to pagan gods, and I'm very angry with them for everything they have done. My anger will burn against this place, and it will not be quenched. But go to the king of Judah, who sent you to seek the Lord, and tell him, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says concerning the message you have just heard. You were sorry and humbled yourself before the Lord when you heard what I said against this city and its people. 
that this land would be cursed and become desolate. You tore your clothing in despair and wept before me in repentance. And I have indeed heard you, says the Lord. So I will not send the promised disaster until after you have died and been buried in peace. You will not see the disaster I am going to bring on this city. So they took her message back to the king. That was a long passage. I hope you have stayed awake for all of that. Do you know, there they are, restoring the temple. And in this moment of them restoring and repairing the temple, we get that Hilkiah says, I found the book of the law. They have found the book of the law. They make this incredible discovery in this moment. And you know, when I've been looking over the last few days about this, what it is that they found, some people say that they think they might have found the whole of the first five books, Genesis through to Deuteronomy. It might have been just Deuteronomy. But what they found was this book, the scroll, whatever it would have been presented like, which was the book of the law that Moses, God gave to Moses. And you know, the fact they found it implies to me that it was lost. You don't generally find... It's, yeah, you're with me on this one, okay? If something's just been found, then, then it must have been lost to begin with. Do you know, this book, <laughs> this book that was the most important book for the Israelites, for the people of Judah, somewhere along the way has got discarded. It's got forgotten about. A book that was never intended to be forgotten about. This book that was God's promise, his covenant to his people was written in this book. This is where he laid out, this is what it's meant to be. This is what you need to do in this book. And I just want us to think about this a little bit. Now, my notes are quite long already, and I was preparing this going, there's so much probably that we could say. I want to highlight just a few little things about this book, okay, about this, to gain a little bit of a bigger picture. And to do that, I'm going to just share a few verses in Deuteronomy. So this is the book. This is the covenant God gave to Moses for his people. And in Deuteronomy chapter 31, it says this, 24 to 26, it says, when Moses had finished writing this entire body of instruction in a book, he gave this command to the Levites who carried the Ark of the Lord's Covenant. Take this book of instruction and place it beside the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God, so it may remain there as a witness against the people of Israel. So this book was meant to remain by the Ark of the Covenant. Okay, let's find out something else about this book. Um, if you're following with me, Deuteronomy 17, this I find really interesting. I'll try and read quite quick. We get here in verses 14 to 20, we get some verses which are some guidelines for the kings. Now at this point, there were no kings. So this is speaking ahead of what's to come. In the time when you have kings... Verse 14, it says, this is the instruction, you're about to enter the land the Lord your God has given you. So this is when the Israelites were about to go in and take the land. God's people were about to go in. When you take it over and settle there, you may think we should select a king to rule over us like the other nations around us. And then it goes on to say, if this happens, be sure to select as king the man the Lord your God chooses. Okay, and then it has a few other things. I'm going to jump down to verse 18. This is what it says about the king. So when the kings come along, this is the instruction. When he sits on the throne as king, he must copy for himself this body of instruction on a scroll in the presence of the Levitical priests. He must always keep that copy with him and read it daily as long as he lives. That way, he will learn to fear the Lord his God by obeying all the terms of these instructions and decrees. This regular reading will prevent him from becoming proud and acting as if he is above his fellow citizens. 
It will also prevent him from turning away from these commands in the smallest way, and it will ensure that he and his descendants will reign for many generations in Israel. So the instruction was that a king had to have a copy that had to be on him, that he had to be reading every day. I wonder how many kings actually did that. I don't think there were many. Even already, as we've been reading about Josiah, the fact that they found this book implies that Josiah clearly didn't have a copy by his side. I reckon some of the good kings before would have had it. It talks about the kings that followed the law. It talks about David. David himself was the best king at this, wasn't he? And he followed the law. He even said to Solomon, as he passed on to Solomon, he said, make sure, make sure you follow everything that the law says. Make sure you're following this book, this scroll. Joash was another good king, and it speaks about Joash, that he was presented with a copy of the law. There were so many bad kings that it says of them that they did not, they refused to follow the law. So just starting to get an idea here of this is what the book of the law was meant to be like for these kings. And I I almost, as I was thinking about this, even this morning, I think it's almost a bit of a yo-yo effect here that I reckon there would have been a good king, followed the law, had the law. The bad kings come along, where does the law go? It disappears. One other little thing, one final thing. Deuteronomy 31. We're going to go back to Deuteronomy 31. I just want to read this one other thing about this book that it says in here. So, Deuteronomy 31. I've lost my verses, where are we? Verse 9. This is what it says. It says, So Moses wrote this entire body of instruction in a book, gave it to the priests who carried the Ark of the Lord's Covenant and to the elders of Israel. Then Moses gave this command, At the end of every seventh year, the year of release, during the festival of shelters, you must read this book of instruction to all the people of Israel when they assemble before the Lord your God at the place he chooses. And it says, Call them all together, men, women, children, foreigners in your town, so they may hear this book of instruction and learn to fear the Lord your God. So we get here, the book of the law was meant to be read before everybody every seven years. I'm not sure that that happened every seven years. Now, in my little bit of research, having a look over the last week, managed to find that there are only a few places where this is actually recorded in Judah's history and in their history. So let me just find them here. Joshua, when he went into the land, Joshua was a time when they gathered all the people together and they read before the people the book of the law. And then the next recording that we get is actually 500 years later. 500 years later, during the reign of Jehoshaphat, that is the time when we read of this happening, of them assembling everyone together and reading the book of the law before them. And then it's over another 250 years till we get to this point where we are in two kings, when Josiah, the beginning of chapter 23, we didn't read this, it says that after all of this has happened, that we read about Josiah, it says that he then summoned everyone together and read the book of the law to them. So when we look in here, something that had been commanded as every seven years you're to read before the company of people, we read in here maybe three times that that happens. Now, I have no idea. I haven't had enough time to look into this. Is there once more? Oh, that's after. Yeah, we're up to Josiah. But yes, after. So after, after Jesus, Judah is exiled to Babylon and they return to Jerusalem, then that's when they read it again. So up to this point to Josiah, though, we don't read of it happening every seven years. The fact it's recorded just those few times shows that this was a rarity. This was not happening. And I just wanted to share this morning those few little things about the book of the law, that this book was meant to remain by the Ark of the Covenant. Every king was meant to have a copy of this given to them that they read daily. This book was meant to be read before everybody 
I love that. Men, women, children, everybody, even the foreigners that were in the land, everyone, every seven years. But so much of that had gone. So much of that was not happening anymore. Somewhere along the way, they lost this book of the law, and they weren't doing what they're meant to be doing with it. Somewhere along the way, in the years of worship idol, misguidance, they had lost God's word. You know, Judah had drifted so far from God's word. And now in this moment with Josiah, we get this incredible moment And I love reading just Hilkiah in my Bible. I know it's probably an editing thing. It's got an exclamation mark when it goes, I found the book of the law. I almost sense the excitement of this priest going, wow, I found this, the excitement. And you know, today, my question is, have you forgotten about this? Have you forgotten about the word of God that we have right here today. Do you know, a couple of weeks ago when I was talking about Josiah, I talked about this call for us to seek God. This is a way that we can seek God by reading his word. It is in here that we can discover guidance, that we can discover direction and correction. This is where we can hear the voice of our Father God talking to us. This morning, if you tune out to anything else that I say now, the main thing, we've got to read this. We've got to read this. This is my message today. Do you know what I almost want to say? If you weren't here two weeks ago, go back and read it, because I talked a couple of weeks ago about how, do you know what? It was quite a simple message. And this morning, almost is the same. It's quite a simple message. We've got to read this. But I want you to hear this heart and this message. This is so important. And yet I wonder how many of us almost take it for granted. We take it for granted. We've probably got some of us, how many have got like more than one copy of this in our house? (laughs) I'm a bit like that. Loads of copies in my bookshelf, loads of different versions. Do you know, I wonder if sometimes we've chosen to cast this aside that we've forgotten about it. You know, I talked about how Judah almost, over their years in the land, they had drifted away from God. My word this morning is be careful of the drift. Drifting is something that happens unintentionally. If you're ever someone that likes to play in the, swim in the sea or something, you know, the number of times I go down with the kids, they'll be playing in the sea here. And then after a few minutes, they've kind of just drifted along the beach. And they're like, they're over here. And you go, no, come back over here. Come back over here. A few more minutes. They've drifted along. They're oblivious, aren't they? They don't realize. Drift, that's what drifting is. We don't realize it's happening. And I wonder how many of us, without realizing, have drifted away from this. Drifted away from God's word. Do you know, I want us to have a little look in a little bit more detail of Josiah's responses. When Josiah hears the book of the law being read to him, I want us to take a few minutes, just look at his response. What happens when he hears it? The first thing is this, he tears his clothes. It says that Josiah tore his clothes. Now at that time, People did that to express their emotion, the astonishment, the sorrow, the grief. He was a king that was so concerned, not just about himself, but for his people. Because later on he says to Hilkiah and all the other people, can't remember all their names, Hilkiah and the gang, he said to them, go and seek and inquire for me and the people of Judah. He tears his clothes when he hears of the devastation that's going to come when he realizes what his ancestors had forgotten about. He tears his clothes. That shows me that he was a man who was broken for his nation. 
He was broken for the nation of Judah. You may have heard that phrase, break my heart, Lord, for what breaks yours. (laughs) How many of us have heard that phrase before? I think quite a few of us. Do you know, is your heart broken for our nation? (laughs) When we read this, do we find ourselves like Josiah tearing our clothes, going, God... (laughs) Josiah wept. (laughs) It says that he tore his clothing in despair and wept before God. When was the last time you wept? (laughs) Over Folkestone, (laughs) over maybe your family, over friends, over this town. Do we weep in despair for the souls of those that are lost? Lottie just led us earlier, didn't she, during worship about God, that we want, we want this town, we want people to know, to know Jesus. And sometimes that means we've got to be like Josiah and we've got to be on our knees, broken and weeping for the people around us. Josiah also, his other response is that he sends Hilkiah the priest, doesn't he? And all the other people, he says, go and go to the temple, go and inquire for me, go and seek God for me. I love this. A while back, we talked, didn't we, about Hezekiah, and I shared that with you back in September, about how Hezekiah, he went and inquired after God. He got someone else. I love that. His response was to re he heard what the Lord said, and he went, go, go. I want you to seek God for me. What does God say about this? He did it the right way. <laughs> He didn't try and sort it all out without consulting God first. Do you know, Josiah once again did what so many of his ancestors did not do. So many kings before him and after did not inquire after God. They didn't consult God. They didn't go to the prophets. They didn't listen and hear what they said. Another thing about Josiah, he was humble and repentant. He was humble and repentant. It says in verse 19, You were sorry and humbled yourself before the Lord and wept before me in repentance. Do you know, when he heard the book of the law, he had a conviction of his sin and the sin of Judah, and it led into a place of repentance. God's word does this. When we read this, it moves us. When we read this, it can convict us of our own sin. It can lead us to a place of repentance. Do you know what I want to read? If you want to jump into the New Testament, this is what God's Word does. 2 Timothy 3, 16 says, and some of you might be quite familiar with this, all scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. When we read his word, that's what it does. The other thing that Josiah's response, so we've had that he tore his clothes, he went and sent the priest and they consulted God. He was humble and he was repentant, but also Josiah's response was to act on what he read. His response wasn't just to hear it and go, oh yeah, that's, that's a bit of a shame, never mind, and goes about the rest of his day. He chose to respond to what he had heard. And you know, when we go into the next chapter, chapter 23, one of his responses was, I've got to gather all these people and I've got to tell them about God's law. And he got the people together and it says, Chapter 23, where is it? Verse 3, it says, The king took his place of authority beside the pillar and renewed the covenant in the Lord's presence. He pledged to obey the Lord by keeping all his commands, laws, and decrees with all his heart and soul. Josiah's response was to obey with all his heart and his soul. He acted by then continuing to purge Judah, continuing to get rid of the idols, get rid of anything, anything 
that was getting in the way of them worshipping God. He also later on, I haven't got time to read it, go away and read this next chapter of 23, and it talks about the Passover. He also then brought back the whole of the festival of Passover, and he made sure they did that. It says, you must celebrate the Passover to the Lord your God as required in this book of the covenant. So he read and heard, this is what we should be doing. He went, right, we've got to do it. And do you know what it actually says? It says that there was, this was like the best Passover ever. This is how it recalls the Passover celebration of Josiah. It said, there had not been a Passover celebration like that since the time when the judges ruled in Israel, nor throughout all the years of the kings of Israel and Judah. Wow. <laughs> so Josiah's response when he hears the book of the law being read to him is to act, it's to obey, it's to say, I'm hearing this, I'm going to do it. This is what we should be doing. I'm going to do it. That's what we've got to do too. (laughs) That when we read this, we obey it. We do what it says. It tells us in James, James 1 verse 22, but don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. The only way I'm going to know what I've got to do is by reading it. (laughs) I've got to read it, I've got to read it, I've got to read it. And I go, okay, that's what I need to do. Some other question this morning. How do you respond to God's word? How do you respond when you read this? What are your responses like? Josiah, he he tore his clothes, he wept, cried out to God, he consulted God, he acted, he obeyed what it said. Do you know, this is the best book. Oh, look, mine's a bit falling apart. Look, I've super glued it so many times and the cover keeps coming apart. This is the best book that you could ever read. Is anyone with me on this one this morning? Yeah, this is the best book, okay, that you could ever, ever read. If you don't like reading, get an audio version and listen to it and listen to it. This is the best book. This book... Do you know what it says in Hebrews? For the word of God is alive and powerful. God, do we believe that this morning? The word of God is alive and powerful. It says in Hebrews, it is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. This book is worth reading. And this morning... My call to all of us and myself, I'm not standing here saying I've got this sus. This is so often when I stand here, it's God speaks to me over this and I'm working this out. But I just feel like I've written here, it's time to up our game with this book, okay? I know I need to up my game. Anyone else with me here? We need to up our game with reading this, okay? Thank you, Sean. Yes. <laughs> We do. We need to up our game. Do you know what? If we want to see breakthrough in people's lives, if we want to see breakthrough in our own lives, we've got to be reading this. We've got to be reading this, hearing this. We've got to read this and allow it to change us because that's what this does. Allow it to change us. Allow it to impact our prayer life. Gareth last week called us to go and come on church almost let's up our game with prayer but this morning I'm saying let's up our game with this because it goes together prayer and God's word goes together we read this it will inspire our prayer it will inform our prayer it's going to change the way that we pray this is going to change the way that we we live the way that we act this is crucial absolutely crucial to our lives Now, hear me right this morning, okay, because I really want to get this. I'm not, I'm intentionally not saying, right, if you want to read your Bible, this is how you're going to do it. I want you to go away and you're going to get a little devotion or you need to get a tick thing. Do you know, I'm not talking today about a religious sense of reading our Bible. And I reckon lots of us here have been there. I've been there where sometimes we just read it just to give a nod to it. Yep, I've done it. You know, this week, don't go, right, I'm going to read my Bible. MJ tells me to. 
brilliant, I've done it. There you go, MJ. No, <laughs> don't do this just to go, oh, I've done my reading plan for the day. Big tick, pat on the back. Okay, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I, you know, we've, I've had moments when I'm like, oh, look how many ticks are on my little list. Do you know, I'm just reading it for the sake of just reading it so that I feel better almost for myself. This is not what this is about today. Don't just read it to tick a box. This is about reading this to see God. This is about more than that. This is about allowing God to speak to us through his word. It's about choosing. Do you know, this word has been going around so much at the minute in in my own heart. This word intentional. So much about Josiah is that he was a king that was intentional. He intentionally chose to seek God. He intentionally chose to respond to what he heard. He could have chosen to hear that book of the law and, and just sat there going, oh, that's all right, but I can't be bothered today. I'm not going to do anything. He chose. He chose to respond. He chose to act. He chose to gather the people and say, come on, this is what we should be doing. Let's be intentional with reading this. Let's be intentional in taking that time, whenever that is, whenever that works for you. What works for one person doesn't work for someone else. Whatever works, but let's be intentional in in just allowing this to shape us and to mold us. Do you know, Josiah and the nation of Judah were transformed by the reading of the God's word, by the law. You know, when you're looking at some of the commentaries, about it. Some people might refer to this time of Josiah after they found the book of the law, a time of spiritual revival almost is what happened. Wow, (laughs) that's exciting. I want spiritual revival. Anyone else? Yeah, because there are so many people that don't know Jesus, so many people living their lives not the way that God wants them to, so many people that are lost. Come on, if we read this, then maybe we will see spiritual revival. But we've got to be reading this. We've got to be reading this. This is the power of God's life, of God's word. The power of God's word is that it can transform lives. The power of God's word is that it can transform lives. Do you believe that? (laughs) I do. And I just, this morning, this is, I I hope you're just hearing my heart this morning, that this is me just going, come on. And I'm saying it to myself, I'm going, come on, Mary Jane, I need to be reading this so much more, because this, wow, this is, this is amazing. I don't want to be like Judah, where it just gets a bit discarded, I've drifted away, and I've just forgotten about it. You know, don't go home today and just shove it back on the shelf and wait till next week and bring it again. <laughs> Do you know, my prayer, my heart is, is God revive me a hunger and a thirst for your word. I want a fresh revelation. Do you know, I wonder how many of us have been Christians a long time and have read so much of this that sometimes we maybe now read it and it's almost, we can be a bit indifferent to it, can't we? <laughs> We've almost gone a bit complacent. Oh, yeah, that's what that says. Wow, God, give me a fresh revelation that I can read these words as if if I'm reading them for the first time, as if I'm hearing them like Josiah for the first time, that it moves me. Oh, that's what I want. And that's what I want for us as a church. Because when when we allow his word to move us like that, amazing things are going to (laughs) happen. Amazing things are going to happen. So this morning, God's word. What's your relationship like with this book? Have you forgotten about it? Have you discarded it? What's your response to reading his word? This morning, the call is, let's up our game, church. Let's be a church that, oh, know this so well. I love in Psalm 119 when it says, your word is hidden in my heart. 
God, let's be the kind of people where our, his word is hidden in our hearts so much that we're able to then use it for prayer, use it to speak into other people's lives, use it to be able to bring that transformation. Let's pray together. I'm going to finish. Let's just pray. Father God, I want to thank you for your word. I want to thank you that we are so honored (laughs) and blessed to have your word, to have so many copies of it, to have so many versions of it. I thank you that we have your word right at our fingertips. And God, I want to thank you this morning that your word is powerful. God, your word is alive and it's real and it's true and it's powerful. And I thank you, God, this morning for that. And God, I want to pray for myself and I want to pray for us as a church and each one of us here. God, oh, will you give us a fresh revelation of your word? Will you put in each one of us a hunger and a thirst for your word? God, I pray that when we read your word, it will change our lives. God, I pray that when we read your word, we will be moved, we will be convicted, we would be on our knees like Josiah, God. We pray for a fresh revelation. God, I want to say I'm sorry for when maybe we've discarded your word. God, I want to say sorry for when we've maybe forgotten about your word. Oh, I'm sorry for that, God. But God, inspire us, refresh us, and revive us, and ignite a hunger for your word in us today. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Mary Jane. We just, uh, a couple of weeks back, we were just chatting through what she was going to be talking about in Josiah, and she preached on that first part and she said I'm not sure what to do next I said oh you got to do the next bit that's the good bit (laughs) when they find the law and I think you know I think somebody put that in a safe place you know because it was so valuable but that's not what it's for it's not to keep in a safe place is it it's to get into our hearts and into our lives and Yeah, thanks, Mary Jane. That's fantastic. I remember, I just remember when you spoke about there about reading it, but maybe if you don't like reading, listen, my grandfather, when he was old, I mean, he was, you know, when I was young, he was quite old, but when he was properly old and he couldn't see anymore, he had like a little tape player with those cassettes with the Bible on it. And he used to, uh, and it had to be, his sight was so bad that it had to be a tape player with big buttons so that he could read them properly. But he used to listen to the Bible. And, uh, you know, there was no excuse in a sense. He, he wanted. It was his desire. Although when he was in nursing home, he used to get in trouble for singing hymns in the middle of the night. But anyway, that's, that's another story. <laughs> uh, Ian, are we going to, we'll just sing to close and, yeah. Uh, so we're pretty much done. We're coming. We're just going to sing as we close, and I don't know what we're going to sing. <laughs> Neither does Ian. <laughs> I'm going to sing "Unbroken Praise." Let's stand together, sing "Unbroken Praise Be Yours, God, Forever." What a declaration that is! That we are going to praise. We're going to give Him honor. We're going to give Him glory, as long as, as well as millions of others around the world praising him. Let's sing as we close. Praise our broken, praise our ending, be yours, be yours forevermore. Praise untainted, praise unfading, be yours, be yours forevermore, be yours, be yours forevermore, 
unbroken praise be yours God forever oh my praise be yours God forever God take this life let it become your throne unbroken praise be yours So my surrender, my devotion, be yours, be yours forevermore. And my surrender, my devotion, be yours, be yours forevermore. Be yours, be yours forevermore. Unbroken praise be yours, God, forever. Oh, my praise be yours, God, forever. Oh, take this night, let it become your throne. Unbroken praise be yours, unbroken praise be yours, God, forever. Oh, my praise be yours, God, forever. Lord, take this life, let it become your throne, unbroken. So let my deeds outrun my words. Lord, let my life outweigh my songs. So let my deeds outrun my words. And let my life outweigh my songs. So let my deeds outrun my words And let my life outweigh my songs Lord, let my deeds outrun my words And let my life outweigh my songs Unbroken praise be yours, God, forever. Oh, my praise be yours, God, forever. Lord, take this life, let it become your throne. Unbroken praise be yours. Unbroken praise be yours. Unbroken praise be yours. What a prayer that is. Lord, take my life. Let it be your throne. Father, this week we surrender our week to you. Your kingdom come in our week. Your will be done in all that we do and say, Father, as we go from here, we pray that we would go in the power of the Holy Spirit, speaking truth and righteousness and love and justice where we go. Father, we pray that wherever we go, we would be ambassadors to your kingdom. Father, we pray you'd help us. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Well, God bless you all. God bless you all at home. It's been uh, fantastic to be together in the room, and I, I hope you really felt the presence of God at home as you've been there. God bless you. Have a great day, and uh, maybe we'll see you this evening, and those in the room again the same. Maybe we'll see you uh, later today. God bless you all. 
and uh, have a great day.